Okay, good morning and welcome. It's great to see you. Worship will start soon. And it's an exciting day.
This is a sound check. This is really loud. Thank you, Andrew. To all of you online and to all of you here, welcome to Worship Worthington Presbyterian Church. What a special Sunday this is. Do you see the picture on the front of the bulletin? After worship today, we get to go out onto the village green, weather permitting, to write a prayer or a blessing or a scripture verse or best wishes on the walls of the Habitat House that we built yesterday. We'll surround the house with a prayer. And by the way, one of my prayers is that 10 of us can help afterwards to take the walls down and to load them onto the Habitat truck, which is right outside the sanctuary, and deliver them. So please help me. I need your help. <laughs> After the house prayer, we have a special reception outside, again, weather permitting, for Pastor Julia 
for her sabbatical send-off. Her sabbatical starts tomorrow, and we will miss her, but we know that this time of refreshment and study will be a tremendous blessing. And I want to show you, hot off the press, although it's a draft, you'll get this. We'll be emailing and mailing out to anyone who doesn't have email. The Tower Tidings, the Sabbatical Times, telling about special events during the sabbatical. Please turn in the center of your bulletin. You'll see on the right side our 10 o'clock service. You'll see on the left side things to do and ways to help. You'll see that we're collecting COVID test kits today through next Sunday. We'll be sending them to Montagne de Luz, the orphanage we support in Honduras. You'll also see we're preparing for graduation Sunday, May 15th. So if you or someone in your family is graduating, please let us know so we can include their information in our celebration. And this Saturday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we're having a special celebration called What Our Mothers and Grandmothers Taught Us. And so all ages are welcome, boys, girls, men, women. It'll be a great time of wonderful refreshments and sharing about the blessings of the women in our lives. I hope you can join me there. So now please take the friendship pads found along the center aisle and fill them out and pass them along. And Dr. Steve Jacoby has our call to worship in music. Hear these beautiful words from 1 Peter. By God's great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 
please join me in our Easter season response. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. <laughs> The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we can approach God with confidence. Let us join together confessing our sin using the prayer found in our bulletin and then in the silence bringing to God whatever is weighing on our hearts. Let us pray. Generous God, in Jesus you have shown us love, love that seeks, love that suffers, love that survives all things. You call us, even command us, to show that love in our lives. Yet we turn away from what you would have us do. We confess that the ways of love are not our ways. We deny and ignore hurt and reject others. Have mercy on us. Help us to receive your love within our own hearts. And from this abundance, love others in your name. Through Christ we pray. Amen.
God's word reminds us, as far as the east is from the west, so far does God remove our sin from us. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. You may be seated, and would the children please come forward, and would you come to this side of the table, please? Yeah, come right up here on the steps. And I wonder if just for a moment, could you two separate just a little bit and make a little room right there, just in case, you'll see why. Wonderful. Welcome. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's try that one more time. Good morning. Good morning. You guys sound a little tired. Are you tired? Yeah. All right. Perfect. Because I want you to do me a favor. Try to pretend that you're tired. So, yeah, you can kind of... Pretend you're falling asleep. You can maybe lean on a friend or a sister. Pretend you're very, very tired. Can you? Oh, okay. Maybe you're very tired because you've been pounding a lot of nails, like a lot of people out here. Maybe you've been carrying heavy walls. Maybe you've been feeding about 120 people or more breakfast and lunch yesterday. Maybe you've been serving God in some way that was hard, but was deeply satisfying, and you are tired. Maybe you are, let's pretend, a member of a youth group, and you've just gotten back from a mission trip, and you're sitting on the front steps of the church, falling asleep on your suitcase, and your parents come, and you wake up, and you say, please repeat after me, this is the best tired I've ever been. <laughs> this is the best tired I've ever been. May you be that kind of tired many times, tired because you've done something wonderful and important, and you'll get refreshed. You'll get some rest. Now, pretend you're tired again. You're good at that, by the way. <laughs> pretend you're tired, very tired. Okay. And now, maybe you're tired because there's been a pandemic for two years. Maybe you've had to, you've planned some things and they've been canceled. Maybe it's been a hard time and you are tired. But let's pretend now that you are Pastor Julia. And you've just been to a baseball game that went extra innings, and it was really fun. Pastor Julia loves baseball. Maybe you've been hiking at Iona in Scotland, hiking up a hill. Maybe you've been visiting with family, and it's been wonderful. And now I want you to stretch, maybe yawn. And repeat after me, this is the best rested, this is the best rested and refreshed, refreshed. 
I've ever been. May it be so for Pastor Julia. So let us pray, and we'll pray for her, and we'll pray for all of us, because we might be tired. Let us pray. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you for the gift of rest and refreshment. Thank you for the gift of important work that we get to do for you in your name. Thank you for Pastor Julia. And bless her in the coming weeks on her sabbatical. And bless us all. Give us the rest we need when we need it. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, amen, amen. Thank you. You can go to class now. Thank you. Please join me in the prayer of illumination. O risen Lord, you are the living bread that came down from heaven. Feed us with your word and by the power of the Holy Spirit, grant us knowledge and understanding. By your holy name we pray, amen. Our first reading is from the Gospel of John. We pick up right where we left off last Sunday after the risen Jesus appeared to the disciples, including Thomas. I'm reading chapter 21, the final chapter of the Gospel of John, beginning at the first verse. Let us listen for God's word to us today. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were, able, they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you so much, choir. It's beautiful. <clears throat> Before I move to the reading, I just want to mention one more time, it really was, is the best kind of tired after yesterday. And uh, raise your hand if you were a part of, of yesterday at all, of it with preparing food or hammering nails or helping out in other ways. Uh, it was a wonderful time. I thank you all, and I thank Tom, and I thank the crew for putting together such a fine day. And by all of us writing a blessing on the wall, it, it makes it a group and it just expands the blessings. But I, because it's such a great project, I would like for us to just share some applause to say thank you. <laughs> Beautiful day. I'm continuing where Joyce just finished. This passage together is known as the epilogue to the Gospel of John to pair it with the prologue that we hear on Christmas Eve. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, that part. So I am continuing where she left off, uh, and let us listen for the Word of God. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After he said after this, he said to him, follow me. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. If the gospel of John was a primetime drama series, you know, produced in hour-long episodes, let's call it as the word dwells among us. How about that? As the word dwells among us. Today's episode would be the season, yeah, the season finale. Episode 21, we'll call it Breakfast Benediction, and it would begin with a scene perhaps of a bright star in a cold night sky and a voiceover kind of like the beginning of Star Trek, these are the voyages of, but instead it would be in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The word came to dwell among us full of grace and truth. And then we would hear previously on As the Word Dwells Among Us, and we would come to a seaside setting, thousands gathered there. This is episode six. Jesus is, Jesus is uh, directing the disciples, zeroes in on Jesus, who's directing the disciples, you need to feed all these people. And they're like scratching their heads, how are we possibly going to do that? And then Jesus shows them. He sees a boy who willingly shares his lunch, two fish, five loaves. Jesus takes it all, thanks God, breaks the bread, gives it to share, and it's shared and shared and shared and shared. And there's enough for everyone. They have plenty to eat, and there are 12 baskets left over. By some miracle, there is enough and more. We say, oh, we remember that episode. Then it zooms on to another one. Jesus is off, perhaps on a meadow, meadow side, uh, uh, teaching the disciples. And he's saying to them, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and they know me. A good shepherd will lay down his life for his friends. And we think, ah, we remember that episode. We move on to another scene. Now we're in the upper room. It's the night before Passover. This is episode 13. And Jesus is at supper with his disciples. There's a great sense of foreboding in the room. The music we hear is ominous. We hear Jesus say, very truly, one of you will betray me. And we watch Judas walk out of the room. 
Jesus says to the ones remaining, I'm with you only a little longer. Where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. As I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples. Simon Peter says, Lord, where are you going? Jesus says, where I am going, you cannot go now, but afterward, you will follow. Peter says, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus says, will you lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. We think, oh, we remember that. And we jump to episode 18. The scene is a coal, charcoal fire outside the gate of where the high priest is. Jesus has been arrested and he's been taken to the high priest. He's inside being tried. And Peter's outside the gate with a bunch of strangers He's warming his hands by the fire. We see it in quick order. Three little scenes where Jesus says, where, sorry, where Peter says he doesn't know Jesus. He says he was not with Jesus. He says, you must be confusing me with somebody else. And we say, ah, we remember that one too. And then the music cues to us to signal, okay, tonight's episode is opening now. We're back at the sea. We're back at the sea, the Sea of Tiberias, where the 5,000 were fed. We recognize the beach. We see seven of the disciples, Peter and the beloved disciple among them. They seem to have returned to their old lives. Peter says, let's go fishing. And so they do. They've all gone fishing. They fish all night long. They catch nothing. Do you remember the, the scene where, where Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing? All night long, nothing. At dawn, a stranger, at dawn, Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. A stranger on the beach says, cast your net on the other side. Do it differently. Break out of your routine. Sometimes an interruption is important. And so they do that, and all of a sudden, the nets are, the net strains for all the fish that have been caught, and the beloved disciple all of a sudden remembers, oh, this is the Lord. This is abundance right in front of us. This is the one who said, apart from us, you can do nothing. And here he is, and we're doing something. It is Jesus, the risen Jesus, on the beach cooking breakfast. He's cooking fish and bread, just like they ate with the 5,000. He's cooking it over a charcoal fire, important detail, the same kind of fire where Peter warmed his hands and denied his Lord. The scent of the fire probably brings it all back to him with a great sense of regret. Jesus says, come have breakfast. It's a breakfast benediction. The meal, of course, is communion. Because when the word dwells among us, any meal can be communion. It's not just about food. It's about community. It's about being nourished, body and soul, as we will do today. And I can't tell you how grateful I am and how, how it couldn't possibly be more fitting that we begin and end this sabbatical time at the Lord's table. Then... Near that charcoal fire, Jesus and Simon Peter have a brief conversation. It's almost like a litany. Three questions and three answers to reverse three denials. Jesus says, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus, feed my lambs. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Tend my sheeps. sheep. Sheep. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. Three questions and three answers to reverse three denials. Three questions and three answers to offer forgiveness, to bring redemption. Three answers and three questions and three answers also to issue a call. The good shepherd has now called a new shepherd. 
At the Last Supper, Jesus told Peter, where I am going, you can't go now, because Jesus was headed to the cross. But afterward, after Easter, you will follow. At the beach, after breakfast, Jesus says to him, follow me. He's already said it once before, but now he says it again. Follow me. With communion, with forgiveness, comes the call to follow, to love as Jesus loved. It's a reminder, among other things, to me, that service, our service, our grateful service to the Lord, flows out of worship, that out of thanksgiving for the gifts we receive, we serve. Fifteen years ago, I received my first sabbatical, and on that sabbatical, I spent two weeks on the tiny island of Iona, three miles long, one mile wide. There, it's, uh, there is there an ancient but restored abbey off the west coast on Iona on the west coast of Scotland. It's a vibrant ecumenical Christian community is there. Uh, that community expresses equal commitments to worship, really quality worship, and to uh, serving the Lord through justice and peace ministries, and a great concern for ecology as well. It was a beautiful, powerful time, those two weeks, and I am looking forward to returning there briefly on this sabbatical, which is a very generous gift from you. Iona Abbey worship occurs twice a day at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. with just one break on Friday evening. Morning worship is followed immediately by chores, and everybody in the community has chores to do, including the guests. So we're all just given a little laminated card, and you do what the card says. So we all share in the cooking and the cleaning of the Abbey every day. Morning worship concludes with this litany. The first parts of it are scriptural. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. That's Psalm 118. We will not offer to God offerings that cost us nothing. That's King David in 2 Samuel. Then it continues, go in peace to love and to serve. We will seek peace and pursue it. In the name of the Trinity of love, God in community, holy, and one. And then there's this final note in the bulletin. We remain standing to leave the work of our day flowing directly from our worship. I love that. The work of our day flowing directly from our worship. That's the right relationship from grace to service. And we see it there on that beach that morning. That's what I see Jesus doing in his conversation with Peter. They've been fed at the Lord's table. Well, okay, it's the Lord's charcoal fire. They, especially Peter, have experienced the Lord's forgiveness. And with that forgiveness comes a call, a call to be a good shepherd of all God's people. The Gospel of John. In the Gospel drama series, as the word dwells among us, the season is coming to an end, you see. The season, but not the series. That's what John's trying to tell us. Episode 21 may not be a cliffhanger, but it's full of teasing hints that this story is not over. That whenever, that wherever the word dwells among us, Anyone who has answered Christ's call to follow me, but then blown it in some way or another, fallen short, denied, failed, forgotten Jesus, the risen Jesus repeatedly restores us and renews our commission, follow me, anytime we need it. As the word dwells among us, whenever we gather in Christ's name, and give thanks to God and break the bread and share it, whether it's in the sanctuary or down the street at Le Chatelaine, it's communion, and the risen Lord is with us. And whenever we stand 
whenever the word dwells among us in all the ways that we stand to serve, whether we're hammering nails or helping put a breakfast on or serving in a hundred other ways, bringing Christ's light to the world, the risen Christ is with us and we have continued the gift to the world. The breakfast benediction is a breakfast charge also. It's a commissioning. Jesus, the light of the world, appearing at dawn with an abundance of fish. Jesus, the good shepherd, commissioning his disciples to be shepherds in the world. It's kind of ironic. Fishermen become shepherds and nobody worries about the mixed metaphors because it's all about embracing the gift of love that God has given to us all to share broadly with the world. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. That is our Easter, our breakfast benediction. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Here in the midst of Eastertide, we are entering another season. As you well know, it is a season of sabbatical. And to send Pastor Julia off with the blessing of the congregation, elders Kathy Mead and Ron St. Pierre, along with Pastor Tom, will speak for us and with us in this time of blessing. As an introduction, um, if I can remind all of us uh, what this is all about. Uh, 
the Presbytery, our Presbytery, the Presbytery of Scioto Valley, encourages pastors who have served churches for six years to take a leave in their seventh year of three to six months for refreshment and renewal. Though there is no requirement other than rest and reflection during the leave, the time away is to be arranged with the support of the session and the church's staff. Our session approved a three-month sabbatical for Julia beginning Tuesday, May 2nd, believing that being free from pastoral responsibilities will not only enrich her life, but will also strengthen our life in the church. While Julia is apart from us, uh, Tom Rice will be our acting head of staff, and we are grateful that we can count on his pastoral experience and leadership. I've been asked to give you some background as to the reasons for a sabbatical leave. As Kathy has just told you, in the seventh year, you get a sabbatical, having served six continuous years. Those of you who are doing a little mathematics out there, Julia's sixth year was in 2020. Her seventh year was 2021. Recall, something intervened. <laughs> the COVID-19 pandemic. So now, in her eighth year, she is taking her sabbatical leave. There are re several reasons for a sabbatical leave. Among those, uh, let me just give you a few. We give thanks to Pastor Julia for serving with us for these eight years. We look forward to her returning and being with us for many years to come. Secondly, we know that the Worthington Presbyterian Church has a talented staff of caring persons who will be able to serve the church well while she is away. While we're grateful for the cooperation of the staff, as preparations are being made for this special season in the church's life. Third, we simply trust that there will be, that it will be very good for Pastor Julia to be away for a period of time. <clears throat> Apropos of that, in this morning's dispatch is a very interesting article about a Presbyterian pastor in uh, Lynchburg, Virginia. Near the end of that article is the following. COVID, this is what she says, what she says. COVID has been a really hard time for us pastors. And I know every profession out there can say the same thing. It's been hard on them and made their lives difficult. But everything that pastors do was completely cut off by COVID. We could not see our people. We could not worship with our people. We couldn't feed our people. We couldn't go and take our people into the community to do the work of Christ. The Lord who offers us each week a day of rest also provides periodic junctures in which we can have extended periods of that rest. So when we take up our work again, we do so with all new strength, new joy, a new sense of salvation in Christ. May God bless Pastor Julia, Pastor Tom, and the staff of Worthington Presbyterian Church during Pastor Julia's sabbatical, and then again, in a new way, her return this coming August. If you could all join us in the litany that is in your bulletin. Julia, in your sabbatical, God will be at work in your life and in the lives of the people of Worthington Presbyterian Church, using all things for our good and God's glory. During this sabbatical time, I'm sorry, we entrust you and your family to God's care and for God's good works and rich blessings. During this sabbatical time, I look forward to seeing how God will be at work in the life of this congregation, in the life of my family, in my own life. And so I entrust you, the congregation of Worthington Presbyterian Church, to God's care for good works and rich blessings. With joy, we will remember you in our hearts during the next three months. 
praying that God will refresh you in body, renew you in mind, and refill your heart with the depth of God's love for you. With joy, I will remember you in my heart for the next three months, praying God, that God will bless you with creativity and fill your hearts with his love for you. Knowing the depth of that love, may you continue to share God's truth and love with the people in our area and in the wide world. Whether together or during a time apart, the people of Worthington Presbyterian Church will strive to faithfully serve God with compassion, energy, creativity, and love. Let us now, in a unified voice, offer a prayer of commitment and faith to Jesus Christ and to the work of God in our lives and in our world. Almighty God, as we enter this Let me slip back in to the center just for a moment. Now, this is a, a festive time, a, a, a happy time to say goodbye because we'll also say we'll see you again eventually. Uh, Julia is taking her leave from her duties, as well you understand. But uh, she'll be in the area when she's not tra traveling. So who knows some of us just might cross her path sometime in the next three months. And there is someone closely related to her who loves her very much, but also knows about things Presbyterian, and he, who shall remain nameless, <laughs> has composed some tips for what to do when you see, if you see Julia in the next three months. At a Clippers game, there's a pretty good chance of this happening become a pretty good baseball fan. So pretty much any conversation about the game, you can't buy her a beer because she won't drink it. The more expensive all beef franks are always welcome. <laughs> Though what goes in them is anybody's guess, and for Julia, even more of a mystery than the Trinity. <laughs> the idea of the Trinity, yes. What else? On a Sunday in worship at another church. Well, she's on sabbatical, so she can worship where she pleases. On the other hand, you might want to have an excuse ready at hand to tell her why you're not at WPC. <laughs> another scenario. Strolling through German village. Smile and say, Was für eine Überraschung, dich hier zu sehen. Was ist überraschender? Weißt du, ist das, ich nicht kann, ich kann nicht Deutsch sprechen. Translation. What a surprise to see you here. What's more surprising is that I don't speak German. <laughs> But, of course, given the locale, you could jump into a conversation about some of the great thinkers of the Reformed faith. Luther, Bonhoeffer, Moltmann. Another scenario might be in the supermarket. Now, this is less likely, perhaps, than the others, because your beloved husband has said, he does the cooking and the shopping in your family. <laughs> But if that unlikely event should happen, the first thing you can say is, hi, Dennis, <laughs> and then, hi, Julia. <laughs> so, yes, she's leaving her pastoral duties, but she's not gone from among us, even when she's far away.
God bless you in this time and the whole congregation. It is time, I do believe, for us to gather at the Lord's table. Oh, offertory. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Kat. Oh, oh, yes. And proving, proving that I'm forgetful, <laughs> but it's good to rely on the help of others, isn't it? Here is a, a bag to send you on your way of some things that have been collected to uh, bless you with comfort and refreshment and nourishment as your days of sabbatical unfold. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. We have so much cause for rejoicing. Freely we have received, abundantly we have been blessed. Freely let us give. Let us present the offerings of our life and labors to God. I forgot to call the ushers forward. <laughs> let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. When our risen Lord was at table with his friends, he took bread, 
And after giving thanks to God, he broke it, and their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. May our eyes be opened as we celebrate this feast. May we recognize our risen Lord's presence and peace. As we come to communion, you'll notice that there is, there are two different colors. That was me. There are two different colors of um, juice. There is purple, which is grape juice. There is a golden color, which is wine. Um, Christ comes to us. Christ is present with us in the bread and the wine. Let us pray. All loving and eternal God, we give you thanks and praise. At your word, the earth was made and spun on its course among the planets. Your hand formed us from the dust of the earth and set us among all your creatures to love and serve you. When we were unfaithful to you, you kept faith with us. When we were slaves in Egypt, you broke the bonds of oppression, brought us through the sea to freedom, and made covenant to be our God. By a pillar of fire, you led us through the desert to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. You taught us love and justice in the prophets and in the word made flesh, you lived among us, glory in our midst. He died that we might live. He is risen to raise us to new life. We offer you our love, our lives, and our praise. You are holy, eternal God, and blessed is Jesus, the one who was dead now lives. The one who humbled himself is raised to rule over all creation, the lamb upon the throne. The one ascended on high is with us always as he promised. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon this bread and this cup that these gifts may be for us the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ that we may be one with all who share in this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be Christ's body in the world. Enfold in your love all who are dear to us, all we hold in our hearts and name silently. Sustain in your mercy all those who are dear to you and may be unseen by us. Guide each of us. Guide all of us in the body of Christ to work for justice and peace throughout the world. Nourished at this table, O oh God, may we know Christ's saving love and live a new life in him. Give us who are fed at his hand the grace to share our bread with the hungry and with the hungry of heart. Keep us faithful to your service until you bring us at last to feast with you and all the saints in your eternal realm. Now hear us as we pray with Jesus and his disciples of all ages. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, <clears throat> took bread, and gave thanks to God for it, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, Jesus took the cup after supper, saying, This cup 
is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this, remembering me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. The gifts of God for the people of God come. Let us celebrate the feast.
Let us pray. Living Christ, as you open the scriptures to us, you make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Let us now go forth from this place, fed at your table and filled by the Spirit to walk with you all the days of our lives and to proclaim the glory of your resurrection to all the world. Amen. Go in peace, here as Christ's own invitation to you, to all of us imperfect disciples. Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, follow me. In the words of Colossians, as we are apart from one another, I will be with you in spirit. And in the words of 1 Corinthians, my love be with you in Christ Jesus. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. See you in August. Amen.
And now the work of our day flows directly from our worship and we go outside to share our blessings with the world. Please join us.